Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to our students. Good morning. As well. yeah. Thank you so much for joining. All right. Good so morning, sir. Last week, oh, I think you may need to move this camera a little back. Okay. So last week we talked about uh, the urgency, chapter one, in, uh, the urgency and the necessity of sharing the gospel. Right. So we saw that why is it important to share the gospel? And why is it that you know it's urgent? Why is it necessary to share the gospel? So we looked at many points. Every person needs a savior. There's only one savior, that is Jesus Christ. And God has commissioned us, He has called us, He has said, You go and share the gospel. Right? Then we also looked at you know, the urgency. There's no second chances. Uh, the Lord Jesus said, thousands of years back, I'm coming soon. So time is running out. And we also learned that you and I must not be ashamed of the gospel. The Lord Jesus was not ashamed of us. And so we must not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So let's get into chapter 2. Chapter 2, we'll talk about the gospel. right? Now, we talk about the gospel so much. What is the gospel? Right? What is the gospel? The word gospel means message. Right? All of us may say, right, uh, I want to share the gospel. I want to share the gospel. What, what do you want to share? The message? Right? What is the message? There are hundreds of messages we can share, but what is the main message? Gospel. What is the main message of the gospel? Right, so that we'll look at today. Let's read First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verse one to three. Go ahead. First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verse one to three. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received, and in which which uh, you stand by which you by which also you are saved if you hold fast that word which i preached to you unless you believed in vain for i delivered to you first of all that which i also received that christ died for our sins according to the scriptures right so in this portion the apostle paul is writing to the believers and he's saying this is the gospel now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached, which you received, on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved. Right? The message that we preach, you and I as believers, the Apostle Paul is saying, when I preached the gospel, through this message, you were saved. Okay. Now, let me give you a background. It's very important to understand the background. The church in Corinth was a place that was filled with idol worship. There was a lot of idol worship. There was uh, you know, thousands and thousands of male and female prostitutes. One. Two, there was idol worship. Right? People were living in sexual immorality. People were living in high level of sin. Right? There was, they didn't know, okay, this is sin, this is good, this is bad. They didn't know. And Paul has gone to that place in Corinth and he is preaching the gospel. And if you read in the book of Acts, it shows that you know, when he shared the gospel, many people became believers and they were able to, you know, they, the church was planted in Corinth. Now, what is this message that the apostle Paul preached? Did he preach about the testimony? Did he say, okay, you know, one day I was a Pharisee and I was going to kill all the Christians, right? And then after that, one light came and I saw Jesus. Jesus said, you, he didn't give all that stories. Testimony is good, right? The book of Galatians, he says, he writes about his testimony. But what did he share? The Bible says that the message that he shared was the message of the cross. The cross of Jesus Christ. That's what he shared. Right? And through this message, he was able to speak about 
the life of Jesus, the death of Jesus, and the resurrection of Jesus. That is the gospel that you and I must share. What is it? The life, the death, and the resurrection. How did Jesus live his life? What did he do? He overcame sin. He did mighty miracles. Is there anybody else in this world who has done those miracles? No. He took on death on a cross for who? For you and me. He died on the cross. He took up our sin. The book of Isaiah, Isaiah 53 says, He took up our sin on the cross. So death. And then he resurrected from the dead. Is there anybody who has resurrected from the dead? Nobody. Right? That is the gospel. Three points. What's it? First one? Life. What's the first one? Life. Life. Death. Death. Resurrection. So, when you and I are sharing the gospel, remember these three points. Life, death, resurrection. Let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17 to 24. This is a very, very powerful verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 17 to 24. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Hello, Pastor, can you hear me? And Hello? if Christ be not raised, your faith is when? Yet, are well, first Corinthians, right? Yes. 17 to 24. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, and if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. No, no, so is this first Corinthians? First Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter one verse seventeen to twenty-four. Okay. First Corinthians and chapter Christ one. Christ is not risen. Your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. No. Then also, those who have fallen asleep in Christ. No, no, no. Is this First Corinthians? First Corinthians chapter one. First Corinthians chapter one verse seventeen. For Christ okay, sent me. Yeah. For uh, Christ sent me. And if Christ is not risen. Your faith no. is fertile. You no, are still no, in no, your that's sins. Not... Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men of the most pitiable. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become... The no, no, I don't think this is First Corinthians. Double check it. For Christ did not send me to baptize. Go ahead from there. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, mm. not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish okay, let's stop there. Let's stop there. Okay, I'm going to read 17 and 18 again. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with words of human wisdom. Right? Not with words of human wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. So what is Paul saying? Christ did not send me to baptize. Is baptism good? Is it good to baptize people? Yes. Yes or no? Yes. It's good, right? That's one of the commandments that God has given us. But here Paul is saying, God didn't send me to baptize people. That is part of it. But God sent me to preach the gospel. Right? Here. Not with words of wisdom. That means what? Not with our own words. Not our own intellect. Now, wisdom is important again. Right? We need the wisdom. We need wisdom of God to share the gospel with people. We need the wisdom on how to speak, what to speak, when to speak. Yes or no? Right? If you're sharing the gospel, we need the wisdom. 
We can't be foolish in the way we share the gospel. We need to think and speak. But what is Paul saying here? I will not rely on my own wisdom, meaning on my own abilities or my own strength. Because if I rely on that, the cross of Jesus Christ will be emptied. Right. Now, what does it teach us? How many of you have given testimony in church? Right. Testimony time. Kawai ke samay. Is that correct? Yes. So you come and you start saying, okay, this is what Jesus did. This is how I was in my life. And this is what I did. And then I prayed. And then I. What happens? Of course, it's a testimony. But sometimes you're only talking about ourselves. Right? Okay, because I did this, because I somehow I went to church, because I went and I read this verse, because I did this, because I worshiped God, somehow the Holy Spirit came. Because I obeyed the Holy Spirit, I followed Jesus. And because I did this, sometimes we make the testimony about us. What is Paul saying? It's not about me. Lest the cross of Jesus Christ be emptied. The message of the gospel is the message of the cross. Testimony, it's good. But when you and I share the gospel with people, it is the cross. Three points. What are those three points? Life, resurrection. That is the cross. Now let's go next, next verse. Verse 18. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. Let me stop there. Now, how many of you, you have shared the gospel with people, but they, they laughed at you? So many, so many times. Right? Why? Because the message of the cross is foolishness. Hey, what are you talking? One man named Jesus was born of a virgin. And he lived a good life. And even though he lived a good life, they put him on the cross. They killed him. They murdered him. And then after three days, he rose again. And now if we believe in what Jesus did on the cross, we have saved. It's foolish. Even now, 20, 2022 years before, right? Jesus died where? In Jerusalem, some other country, 2020 years ago. Now, if you tell people about Jesus, they'll say, Jesus died long back. He was not even, he's not even come to our country. And you're believing in this. It's foolish. It doesn't make sense. So when we die, we'll go be with Jesus. Where is Jesus? All these questions will come. Now, Paul is saying, it is foolishness to those who are perishing so there'll be times you'll share the gospel they'll they'll ridicule they'll mock you they will make fun of you they'll make fun of jesus they'll make fun of the cross it's foolishness to them because they are perishing the devil has blinded their eyes is it happening only now remember when jesus was alive jesus was doing what did jesus say i am the messiah before Abraham was, I am. Everywhere he says, uh, you know, he, he declares himself as the chosen one. John the Baptist saying, behold the Lamb of God who takes the sins of the world. He didn't hide. But they themselves didn't see. They didn't see him as a Messiah. So even now, the devil can blind people's eyes. Because and make them feel that this is foolish. It's foolish. Doesn't make sense. It is not real. Maybe Jesus was really a person. He came, he did some miracles, he died. He he's a good man. It's foolishness to those who are perishing. But what is the verse? Second half of that verse say. But to us, everyone say us. Each one of us. Right? To us who are being saved, it is the power of God. So, to look, picture it this way. You have an unbeliever 
you have a believer. Give them the same Bible. Give them the same verse. Okay, 2 Corinthians 5.17, just an example. Or Ephesians 3.20. Tell both of them to read it. Both will read. Okay, one will feel it is foolish. What is this? Poems, stories, these are. But the believer, you and I will say, hey, this is the power of God. What a powerful verse. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. That means even if I've sinned, I've done something very bad. When I come to the Lord Jesus, he forgives my sin. But the same verse, unbeliever is reading. He says, what is this? Anyone is in Christ. Who is this Christ? He's a new creation. I don't want to be a new creation. Why? Because it's foolishness to them. Same verse. It's the power of God unto salvation. You see the difference? Right? So the enemy, the devil will blind uh, people. But here's the thing. When you and I share the gospel, the Bible says, and there are many scriptures which talks about the word of God that is alive. The word of God is like a hammer. The word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. It can go deep into people's hearts. So we trust God's word. Right? Because it's the gospel. How many of you have become believers? Even those online, you can share your thoughts. How many of you have become believers just because somebody shared the gospel with you? Two minutes, five minutes, they shared the gospel. Something happened, and then over time, you became believers. How many of you are there that way? Somebody shared the gospel. Yeah, so many of them. Uh, me too. Uh, even though I was born and brought up in a Christian family, I didn't understand so many things. Uh, okay, go to church, come. But when somebody shared, hey, you know what Jesus can do for you? This is what he did for you on the cross. He can wash your sins. He can make you a new person. You don't have to live in shame. You don't have to live in guilt, in condemnation. You don't have to live in sin. Everything will change. You become a new person. Because that's the power of God. Right? God has chosen the foolish method of preaching the gospel to save people. Can you believe that? Why doesn't the Lord Jesus come and say, okay, I'll stand here, everyone look at me, and then you become believers? Did Jesus do that? No. But can he do that? If he wants to, he can do that. But God didn't choose that. God has chosen you and me to be part of his kingdom. You and I, to share the gospel, we need to communicate it so people will get to know. You understand what I'm saying? right? We have to communicate the gospel. We have to preach. They will not know unless we don't preach. Okay? Okay. The message of the cross is both the power of God and the wisdom of God. Everyone say power of God. And say power wisdom of God. Of God. Wisdom yeah. of God. First one, the message of the cross. That means you can be talking about the cross, right? Maybe it's a friend. For example, you're talking to your friend. You know, your friend is saying, you know, I don't want to, I'm going through depression. I'm going, I want to end my life. Now you're sharing the gospel. You're saying, you know, I know that you're going through a difficult time. I know that you, you know, going through so much trouble. But let me tell you what Jesus did for you on the cross. When Jesus was on the cross, he took up all our sin. He took all his, all the suffering that he went, he took it up for us. Now, what are we doing? We are sharing the message of the cross. And what is the outflow of the message? It is the one power of God. Two. Look at your books. Don't look at my face. What's the first one? Power Life. of God and? Wisdom of God. You'll have breakfast. You'll have breakfast. Come on, the online students should hear you. First one. Ah. Power of God. Wisdom of God. That's what the gospel is. The power of God and the wisdom of God. So you're sharing. Don't expect 
you know your your uh, you know words to be very eloquent that's all important but the message of the cross is the power of god when you share the power of god is released from your mouth the message itself is powerful you don't have to add any masala to it you don't have to add anything extra do we do we have to add anything to what jesus did no all we need to do is share the message is the power of god and two it's the wisdom of god how will god do how will god minister to people he's got his he's got his way that is god's wisdom god has decided it that way right god will speak to people the holy spirit will speak to people and their lives will be touched because of the gospel right so i want to encourage each one of us you know initially i used to think okay i will share my testimony then i will share somebody else's testimony and then i will share about you know all the other things that god can do all the miracles god can do right he parted the seas into two then god had um, made dry bones become as flesh then he can do all these wonderful miracles i'll talk about all of that then i'll talk about how jesus did some great miracles and then slowly i'll tell them okay if you believe god will god loves you god cares for you i used to think we have to do it that way but i realized that when the moment i'm sharing the gospel it is the power of god it is more powerful than any testimony it is more powerful than any miracle it is more powerful than any other work or any other words that you can speak now here's the question i want to ask each one of you you can ask yourself do you believe that the gospel is powerful right now i can believe this room is empty what we believe is what we will do our convictions will make us who we are right yes or no if i'm if if somebody comes and tells me you know what jesus is it's not a real person or jesus died on the cross but that's it he did not resurrect from the dead now if i if my convictions are not strong what will happen i'll believe it but if my if i really believe in my heart this is what is it the bible is saying nobody can change it yes or no right can somebody come and tell you you know what uh, so maybe somebody will come and say you know Jesus cannot heal any more no more healings in the church now people can believe it but what does the bible say i've come to heal i've come to deliver where is holy spirit is there is gift of healing it should be there it will be there nobody can stop it but our our thinking can stop it if we think it's not going to happen it's not going to happen right so our convictions are very important right now i want to give you this example in church history there was a man named brother a a allen right he was a preacher and as a young man he wanted to see the power of god working in his ministry right he used to preach about you know he had a church he used to preach but one of his you know one of his convictions was i want to see the power of god it's easy to preach but i want to see so god began to use him as a healing evangelist god gave him a, a thought you know you use the gospel the cross the message of the cross and after that you pray for people and people will be healed so what he began to do was every sunday he would preach and towards the end he will add the message of the cross and then he will say those who want healing come in front right? and people would come people with wheelchairs people with all kinds of diseases sicknesses and you know what he used to do he used to just stand and say be healed in jesus name and they'll be healed so he he used to say i didn't have to do anything why because the cross is the power of god i've already preached the cross i already believe in the cross right and 
All he had to do is pray for healing. Done. And he became, in the early 1950s and 60s, he became the greatest healing evangelist. There were reports of children. There, there was a story where this little, this mother brought this child with 26 or 28 diseases, I think. This child with 28 diseases. God told him, you pray. And he prayed and the child was completely healed. The child could not hear, could not see, could not speak, could not move his limbs, but God healed him. Was it about the person? Was it the pastor? No. It was the message of the cross. When you and I believe in the message of the cross, we will see everything else. Everything else, miracles, blessings, everything will follow us. Amen? Okay. So let's look at the power of the gospel. Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. Let's read that. Romans 1 and verse 16. It's in your books as well. I think you can. Romans 1 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for Jew first and also for the Greek. Yeah. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. Now, the Apostle Paul is saying, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God. Now, the word, it goes on to say, is the power of God unto salvation. What is salvation? Let's look at that word, right? Now, the Greek word for the word salvation means sozo, right? And it's not one, one meaning. You know, you and I think it's just one meaning, right? We say, okay, I prayed. I said, Jesus, come into my heart. Jesus came into my heart. Now I have received salvation. That means I'll not go to hell. I'll go to heaven. No, it's more than that. Sozo, the word, the Greek word, has a long list of things in that word salvation. Let's look at it. It is found in the New Testament about 110 times, and it's a comprehensive word. What is it? We're going to list them down, okay? I'm going to just say, I'll say the first point, and you repeat it after me. Okay, those who are online also, let's just repeat it, right? Declare this. So all of us have received salvation. Yes. All of us have received sozo. Yes. yes. Okay. So what all you have received? Uh, all of you have received this. Okay. One, forgiveness of sins. Forgiveness of sin. Forgiveness of sin. One. First one. What's the first one? Forgiveness of sin. Two. Healing from sickness. Healing from sickness. Healing from Three. Sickness. Deliverance from every work of the enemy. Deliverance, deliverance from, from every world of from danger. Rescue from danger. Rescue, Rescue from, from danger. Free from, free from total harm. Free from total harm. It goes on, right? It means to be saved. Go on, saved. Saved. Healed. Saved. Healed. Delivered. 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 Rescued. Preserved. Rescued. Be away from the work of the devil. Away from, from the, the work, work of the, the devil. devil. You see this word? You see this? What is salvation? It is not just, okay, I believe in Jesus. Everything is good now. I can go to heaven and live with him happily. No. It's more than that. Let's break it down now. First one. Forgiveness of sins. Okay. You don't have to repeat now. <laughs> okay. The moment you believe in Jesus, your sins are forgiven. Now, did the did Jesus give you one receipt? Your sins are forgiven, one stamp. Forgiven. Did he give you a receipt? Did, did he tell you your sins are forgiven? But the moment you believe in Jesus, your sins are forgiven. If you go to God and say, Lord Jesus, forgive my sins, sins are forgiven. Two, deliverance from the work of the enemy. Now, the enemy will have different ways of tempting and bringing... Uh, trouble on people. 
He can bring sickness. He can bring uh, trouble in the mind, trouble in the body, trouble. He can throw arrows at every side upon us. But the moment we become believers, you and I are, you know, we, we, we are, we find deliverance from every work of the enemy. So what can you and I do? Say, for example, you're in trouble and you're going through a difficult season. You can say, God, because I believed in you, Lord Jesus, I know you can deliver me from, the pro from this problem, from this situation that I'm going through. Because the Bible says, a thousand may fall at my side, ten thousands at my right hand, nothing can hurt me. So you will deliver me, Lord. You can declare these verses. Right? Then what else? He rescues us from danger. He gives us total wholeness. Wholeness in the mind. Wholeness in the body. Now remember this. We can be physically very strong. But if emotionally we are weak, what will happen? It will show. Let me give you this example. Remember King Saul in the Old Testament? He was a mighty man. He was the king of Israel. He was a strong man. He was a built. He was, a, he was in the army. But there was a problem in his mind. The enemy would torment him. He couldn't function at all. Right? So just because we are strong physically doesn't mean we are strong mentally. Or just because we are strong mentally doesn't mean we are strong physically. But when you and I as believers, we believe in Jesus, wholeness in the mind, wholeness in the body. Will sickness come? Yes. Will weaknesses come? Yes. But we can declare. We can declare. It is our choice. Say, oh God, I got headache. From last two days, this headache is there. It's not going. Headache. Then I did this medicine. I did that medicine. I put all kinds of things on my head. Nothing is happening. What is, hap what, what is happening? What will happen? It will be there only, the headache. It is not going to go. Why? Because you're going on saying it's there. Past two days it's there. It's not going. But if you declare, hey, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I command this headache. I command these pains in my body to get out of my body. Because by your stripes I am healed. This is already there for us. If you declare it, you will receive it. If you don't declare, what will happen? It will continue. From headache, it will become back pain. From back pain, it will become leg pain. Then the whole body is paining. Oh God, what is this? Why, why is this happening to me? It's the choices that we have. We can either declare what God has for us, or we can talk about our situation. Right? So what are we going to choose? What are we going to choose? Are you going to talk about your situation? Or are you going to talk about what God calls you? What God wants you to do. What God wants you to do is declare what he says here. Then he says you're saved, you're healed, delivered, victorious, rescued, preserved, victorious. Right? Sometimes you may feel, hey, I don't feel victorious. Everything I do is a failure. If I write my exam, I'm not doing well. If I start my own work, I'm not doing well. Everything I did in my life is a failure. How am I victorious? You may feel that. How many of you feel that? Sometimes it happens, right? You feel that. Oh, everything I've done is a failure. But Jesus is saying I'm victorious. Where? I don't feel that. Now remember, salvation is not about a feeling. It's not about emotion. It's about who you are. We may have failed, but God is saying you can be victorious. What does the Bible say? When we fall down, he will lift us up. Is it good to be fallen down only? Or is it good to rise up again? It's always good to rise up again. right? Then he goes on to say, we are saved from under the devil's power and restored into wholeness and God's wholeness of God's order and well-being by the power of God's spirit. They're saved from the work of the devil. 
it's like the devil has trapped you right now what will, when we believe in the gospel when we receive salvation it's like the lord jesus will come remove that hand and take you from darkness into light let me share this story this is a real story that happened in the early 1960s uh, this is about a woman a young girl right her name is gulshan esther she was a, a muslim by faith right and she lived they lived in pakistan and when she was born she was born with certain kinds of diseases so she could not walk right she could not walk every time there has to be somebody next to her but she was from a rich family right so they had workers to help her and all so by the time she was 6 years old 6 or 7 years old the parents had gone to many places for prayers nothing happened right so one day she was reading the quran in her home and she came into this portion which says yeshua he healed diseases and he cleansed the lepers and he did many miracles so she thought about it oh who's this who's this yeshua who's this jesus who did miracles who blind eyes he opened he opened deaf ears he did he healed people who's this jesus so she was interested so what she will do every day she's only about 9 or 10 years old now every day she will read the quran then she will come to this portion and will say and she will pray she will say jesus i don't know who you are but the, the the quran says that you healed people so now you heal me that's all and she'll go to sleep somebody will come carry her put her on the bed and go to sleep this happened for 2 years after 2 years she wanted to end her life she said what kind of life only on the bed what is my future nothing my parents are worried i don't have any life it's better i end my life before ending her life she said okay i will read at least the scriptures for the last time and i'll go end my life so she did it she read the quran then she came to this verse this verse jesus i don't know who you are but whoever you are come and heal me and somebody came the workers came took her put her on the bed to sleep but she was waiting for those helpers to go so that she can end her life that moment she felt something in her room right and she felt a person is there and the lord jesus tells her get up and walk she says i can't no you read about me right you were reading about me for 2 years you read you said if you are if jesus you heal people heal me now i have come to heal you get up and walk so she tries next thing she knows she is walking she walked and fell at jesus's feet and you know the story goes on she says jesus says now you will be a, a a minister you will share the gospel you will be a testimony about my healing power right and then there is sound in the room the workers everyone are coming parents are running she is running inside how is this girl who was born lame running so she tells no i was praying jesus came and healed me they said don't tell anybody this keep quiet she said no it was only jesus i met i seen him and then she had to run away from her life from for her life because they wanted to kill her and you know we know right it's not easy to become a christian in these nations but the point is that moment in that single moment she was taken from place of darkness she received healing she received deliverance she received hope she received salvation in just one moment one moment it would have been maybe 10 seconds done her life changed sozo means salvation sozo means healing sozo means deliverance from demonic powers sometimes we look at the devil and we focus on what the devil is doing no devil is bringing trouble devil is bringing challenge yeah, devil will do 100 things 
that's his response that's his work let him do but you and i as believers we have authority over the devil do we have or no yes or no the moment we believe in the cross we have authority the devil can say i'll make this trouble come upon you what you can say please don't do please please i'll pray only one hour it's <laughs> can we do that you don't have to be afraid of the devil the devil say okay i'll bring this problem you say bring you stand firm you say hey i'm god's child you're already defeated you're not standing on your strength you're standing on the cross so jesus is there with you what does the bible say he crushed the serpent's head he's defeated the devil where he becomes victorious is where we allow him to win yes or no when we allow the devil to okay you come you cause you be open the doors he'll come and sit but if we close the doors he will not come it is our choice again right sozo means rescue and preservation from danger sozo is for everyone now here's the important part salvation is received by grace through faith everyone say this salvation is received salvation is received by grace by grace through two words grace and faith what is grace grace is not coming by our own effort i'll give you this example in school the passing mark for exam is 40 out of 100 now you get 39 what will you do you get you got 39 it's failed 40 is the pass mark you're holding the answer paper what you will do you'll start searching everywhere <laughs> where can i get this one mark more but everywhere it's not there no 39 failed i don't know if you've done it but you'll go running behind the teacher sir one mark. One mark you give, I'll pass. So they know yeah, I cannot I can't give you. I've already given you too much grace. So one mark. If you give one mark, I'll pass. And the teacher will say, Okay, let me see. There's nothing here I can give you one mark, but I'll give you just so that you pass. And then he'll write plus one and make it 40. <laughs> but it's happened to us. Yeah. Sometimes it's 38 or two marks, sir. Ma'am, please, two marks, just two marks. Next time I'll do well. Now the teacher will give you that grace marks. Do you deserve that grace marks? No. Actually, you deserve minus marks. <laughs> the teacher has given you grace marks. Okay, take two, two, two marks for you, just so that you don't fail. Now, Jesus died on the cross when we come to jesus don't come saying one mark two mark and all jesus is saying i'm giving you all of this i'm willing to give you 100 on 100 there's grace grace is free i've given it you don't deserve it but i've given it to you so we come to the cross we have the grace of god but we must also have faith in him grace is there but we must have faith. What is faith? What is faith? Hebrews 11.1. 1. Read. One of you can read. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Yeah. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. Evidence of things not seen. How many of you have seen Jesus on the cross dying? You've seen pictures. How many of you have seen Jesus? I, I saw like Apostle uh, John. Only John and his Mary and the, you know, the Roman soldiers were there. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. Evidence of things not seen. Now, I've not seen Jesus. Face to face, I've not seen. But I'm willing to give my life to Jesus. Why? 
faith. And I don't have to see to believe. So that's what faith is. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. When I die, how do I know I'll go to heaven? I have the hope. I have the assurance. I have the faith. Because the word of God says. You understand that? So you come to the you know, I come to the cross by grace. Say, God, all the gifts, all the talents, all the things that you've done for me, all the things I'm doing for ministry, I will put that aside. I will come empty into your presence. That is called grace. And when we have faith that he is there to answer our prayers, that is called salvation. Salvation is received by grace through faith. Right? So while presenting the gospel, uh, we may have to present, you know, spontaneous meaning immediately we may have to uh, present the gospel there will be times when we have to uh, minister the full gospel right we have to be very accurate sometimes we have to just pinpoint be very quick in sharing the gospel but here are a few things that we must cover while presenting the gospel message first one the existence of god now, there is a god now people if there are if there are people your friends may say there is no god we have to Explain to them, hey, there is a God. Two, the problem of sin and its consequences. Now, any religion in this world, whether it's Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, whatever religion, they believe in sin. There's no religion that doesn't believe in sin. So every religion has sin. So you can talk about sin and the consequences. Then how is sin dealt with? You know, in other religions, they go to a certain place, they do certain things, and they believe that, okay, God will bring, you know, God will forgive them. But we can say, we can talk about Jesus, how he's our savior, he's our healer, he's our deliverer, right? Uh, invite them to believe in this gospel. Now, you're not forcing them, not holding them in the collar and saying, do you believe? Now you are believing in Jesus. No. No. So give them the opportunity. It is their faith. It is God's grace. It is their faith. You cannot force them, right? Ask them. So sometimes they may not know how to pray because they are new. They need to need help. So you can tell them, say, you can pray, Lord, forgive my sins. Lord Jesus, forgive me. Thank you that you will forgive my sins. You have washed me by, and I believe in the cross and I trust that you will, you will live inside my heart. Simple prayer. Two minute prayer can change their lives. Right, then you can pray to ask them to respond to the Lord Jesus and pray for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So the gifts of the Holy Spirit, you can take time. But eventually, the first thing is that salvation, that they may come to know Jesus. That is the number one priority. So uh, page 11, we have two minutes more. Okay, quickly we'll do this. Page 11, so we see there are different kinds of sharing the gospel. Four spiritual laws, every man is a sinner, sin has its consequences, God's love and Christ's provision, and then when you believe, you will be saved. Right? Simple laws on how to share the gospel. Then you can talk from the creation, how God created the world and how till Christ Jesus, what Jesus did on the cross, you're talking about that. Then you have two-minute testimony. Your salvation experience. So, you know, before I believed in Jesus, I used to do all these things. I used to live in sin. But now, after believing in Jesus, I find freedom and I'm able to live a holy life. You're giving your testimony. How things were and how things have changed after you've believed in Jesus. Right? Then also experience of divine need. So sometimes, you know, there are people who need healing, financial need, material need. They're praying for people. Right? And then you can say, hey, you know what? When I was praying for my parents or I was praying for my family members, they had this sickness. God was able to heal them. Why don't you pray? Why don't you ask the Lord Jesus to heal? And he can do it for you. So you're using a testimony. You're using an experience. And you're bringing uh, the gospel. So there are many different ways. Now, as you're sharing the gospel, don't think, okay, 
is this the four laws is this the six laws is this the you know whatever two minute testimony don't think about all that you can mix it up but make sure the message is the cross of jesus christ amen amen all right uh, so we'll continue from next class thank you everyone thank you to those who are online as well god bless you thank you sir